Mick, the weekend's game, nine point loss, but it was uh, ten points was was for them. I guess that shows that you guys were doing something right. Yeah, I think um, the result was was close. Um, I think um, Geelong kept us in the game early, missing a few pretty easy shots that they probably should have kicked. So, um, but to our credit and the girls' credit, we hung in there. We didn't fall away. Our effort was um, was there. We changed a few things late in the game, which really helped us, and we look to continue that form into uh, this week. What were the sort of things that you needed to change or did change? Um, we just thought that they were getting a lot more uncontested possessions than they should have. So um, just really it was a mindset, flick the mind back on, um, you know, close down space and, and get the ball turned over and we, we felt we were able to do that. Um, Michaela Weston's injury, what did, you, what did you make of it? Yeah, unfortunate, but um, what we do know, it happened because she was doing what Westy does, like chase down tackles, like outstanding. In the last four minutes, the game was up for grabs and she's still doing those efforts. So, yeah, unfortunate for Westy and we'll miss her for the last two weeks because her pressure in our front half has been outstanding. Her season has just seemed to go every week, she's getting better and better. So how much will she be missed? No, she will be. I think every, every week that Westy's played, she's grown in confidence and um, you can see that in the performance. Um, we played on the wing a little bit early in the year and then just cemented to half forward um, and we just think she's grown in that role and pressure first mindset she loves that side of the game so it really helped us with that speed in her front half. And on Ella Roberts she hasn't obviously had the impact you know getting six goals each, each week but she has shown signs of confidence and improvement have you noticed that as a coach? Yeah I always said and I said before Ella Roberts played a game that we can't expect too much from Ella she's a 17 year old kid coming into AFLW who's never played an AFLW game um, so we couldn't expect too much for her. What we have seen has been pretty good in her first year, so we know she wants to get better and she wants to keep working on her game and she's not satisfied with where she, where she is and, and she shouldn't be. Um, so we really like what we're seeing from her and the growth we've seen throughout the course of the year, but we've still got to pull ourselves back to she's now you know, still a kid um, and she's got a lot of learning to go and she's got a lot of footy in front of her. Um, you know, in a couple of years' time, she'll be a pretty special player for us. On the Bulldogs this weekend, they obviously are wanting to play finals, but they do play a similar brand to what Geelong does, so there is some hope that you can maybe beat them? Yeah, they, they're very similar, um, the way they want to play. Um, looked at the stats and that, that's what they tell us. So, um, yeah, we'll train a few things this week. We'll try and put a few things in place to be able to stop that and, and get some turnover and get it in our front half a little bit more, which we struggle to do against Geelong. So we've got a bit of work to do between now and game day. Um, yeah, so last year obviously a 60 point loss to this team. What's different this year? You know, you guys are a little bit different of a side this year, so... Yeah, well, we're completely different. We, um, we've turned over half our list. Um, I haven't actually looked at who played last time we played them, but it'll be an interesting exercise to do, um, how many actually played last year compared to this year. Um, but I think we've added some real young speed and vibrance in our group and um, We've been competitive in most games we've played and um, we're looking forward to the challenge on Saturday and seeing whether we can get over the line. Two games left, two top eight sides. What's the focus going forward for the next two weeks? Yeah, two wins. I mean, that's and it's easy to say and it's, it, should, it might sound silly to some people, but if we're not coming into game day and not preparing to win each week, we may as well not turn up. So um, that's our focus. Um, you know, we've we've fallen short. I think there's like four games under three points. So, uh, under sorry, um, ten points. So, we think we're we're going to be right in the game. Um, and you know, the start's going to be important, and crucial to how it all pans out. So, twenty five games this weekend for yourself. How do you feel this year's compared to the rest of them? Yeah, it's been a pretty consistent year, I think, to say for myself. And it's something that I've been working on a lot and just making sure that I play footy at a level that I like to play at, at that high level for every weekend. And I'm really happy with how it's turned out so far this year. I <laughs> didn't know it was my 25th, so thanks for that. Um, so yeah, like it's really nice to obviously bring up that milestone. Um, but yeah, there's always more to do. You've been given the best forward for most weeks and last week held, um, I think it was Chloe, I don't know how to say her surname, to just one goal. Do you feel like that in itself is a, a good milestone? Yeah, and I quite actually like playing on those big forwards. It's always nice to have a challenge really on field and it's good knowing where I'm at each week, uh, just being able to play on those top players week in, week out. So yeah, I love playing on Chloe and she's a great player as well. Is there something you've been working on doing and showed? 
Yeah, I think it's been coming there in previous seasons. Some It would be every other game where I'd play on their key forward. And so now we've gotten to a point where my level of footy is at that stage where I can play on them week in and week out. And I can back myself in for those games that I'll get the job done. What about working with Charlie and um, Bell down the back? Do you feel like you guys are forming a bit of a partnership? Yeah, definitely. And it's you know quite a relief when you step out on field and you see both of them um, out near you. So, yeah, it helps a lot um, mentally and obviously knowing my player, but knowing that they'll get the job done as well each game. So it's nice. This may be one for me, but do you feel like it's a bit stiff that Soph hasn't been recognised in the team of the week yet? 100%. Um, if you, yeah, I didn't actually realise that, but that's that's amazing. Um, even on the weekend, um, you know, the team of the week was picked and a lot of the girls that got picked in that team thoroughly deserve it. Um, but we go on stats a lot. And if you look at Soph's stats, she wouldn't be up there in, in having the numbers, um, but influence on games in terms of stopping the most dangerous forward in the opposition um, gets it done week after week. So, um, yeah, team of the week, but I think Soph should be in um, conversations for the 22 under 22 and our All-Australian team as well. So I think out of eight games, I reckon Soph's been beaten once and that's a massive achievement. And the goal on the weekend that her opponent got wasn't because of Soph. So, um, yeah, I think, um, yeah, more credit's due. So if someone, you know, one of the Freo girls got named in the team of the week this week and that was in a 29-point loss, if they didn't even kick a goal, is it frustrating to hear something like that? Oh, I don't really kind of look at myself and look for that recognition each week. Uh, every game I just go in and just wanting to do my role and play my part for the team. And so to get recognition is nice, but it's not something that I'm really gunning for week in, week out. Some of your other teammates have been recognised as rising stars. So overall, even though the win tally may not have grown, it seems like every week there are those wins. Do you feel like that's happening? Yeah, for sure. There's a very different feeling, I think, coming into the club this year where you can see the trajectory that we've got for future years and even now, like Mick said, like we've lost probably four games under 10 points and maybe at least half of those we probably should have won. So you're sitting there going, yeah, the improvement's obviously there and I'm really excited to see where it's going to go in years to come. You're pretty unbeatable at the back, as we, <laughs> as we mentioned. Um, what kind of prep goes in, I guess, for four games for you to be able to do that week in, week out? Uh, a lot of it comes from training and I feel like I go into the games pretty confident if I know I've trained well and then yeah just speaking with coaches and just knowing who I'm playing on obviously week in week out and doing a lot of prep on them just watching vision and just sort of going back to Roy my line coach and just saying so how do you think I should go about it for this week and just bouncing off each other um, and yeah we come up with something that so far has worked pretty well this year. Pretty skilled footy player, but also a pretty skilled hockey player. Do any of those skills transfer oh. across at all? Oh, probably. I feel like the way that you play hockey, you can translate quite well into footy in just terms of like spacing and just sort of seeing the game ahead of you. And for me, when I played hockey, I've, I was a midfielder, so it's a bit different to playing down back. Um, but yeah, there's definitely a couple of things that translate really quite well. Um, but the main difference is, I mean, hockey, you can't let the ball hit your foot. So it's kind of to learn how to kick properly, but we got there in the end. Was that a hint you want to play mid? <laughs> no, not yet, mate, not yet. <laughs> yeah, um, Mick, to you, last time against the Bulldogs, Kirsty Lamb and Ella Blackburn were dominant. Um, is there any, are we putting anything in place to sort of stop those two? Yeah, I think we need to absolutely keep an eye on, on those two quality players. Um, I think what we've been able to do this year, especially through our midfield, is have a bit more consistency through three or four girls, not just relying on, on one or two. So, um, yeah, we'll obviously keep an eye on those two and see how it's you know going through the game. But um, we'll back our midfield in to do what they've done really well this year, and that's win clearance and get it going our way. Yeah, we've seen also Emma Swanson and Bella Lewis become sort of genuine kicking goal threats um, over the years. Uh, is there any sort of change in the structure to allow them to sort of get up front? Um, we do flick Swanee Ford a little bit um, and she can take a really good overhead mark and I think um, the shots on goal that Bella Lewis has had have been more in general play on the run sort of style and, and she's got herself really fit this year and running across the ground really well so she, those opportunities naturally pop up for her but um, I don't care who kicks the goals, man, as long as they go through. Yeah, and finally, Matt, without giving anything away, is there any sort of... Uh people that will fill, you know, Michaela Weston's speed and pressure out there. Give it away, Mick. 
<laughs> Tell us. Yeah, well, we announced um, Ashley Games as a debutante today to the group, so she'll come into our team um, and she'll play that that small forward pressure role um, and get a run through the midfield at some point as well. So um, I think it's really clear that whoever comes in our side, what Westy has done for our team and what's expected of them. So um, they don't go in not knowing what their role is.